Hello everyone, Ruby Ravel here, back to do part two of my Venus conjunct Pluto video. I feel I spent far too long yesterday waffling about the symbolism of the underworld, so I want to rectify that today by talking about more of the ways in which that aspect can actually manifest in your life in general. Now, to understand this, we have to look a bit more at the nature of Venus. Now, Venus is the part of us that doesn't, isn't content just to live a normal life, but wants that life to be beautiful, to be enjoyable, to be sweet, to be pleasant, to be filled with relationships and things and objects and possessions and sensations that make life more than it is. You know, it, it's a bit like a flower or the fruiting body of a plant. It's this ornamental, beautiful thing that isn't strictly necessary, but which on a deeper level is. We need beauty in order to survive because without it, life becomes gray and bland and utilitarian. So where the planets that Venus is aspecting and the signs of the zodiac in which she is transiting color the ways in which she tries to find that pleasure in which she tries to fill the world with more of what she values and simultaneously also to try and distance herself more from the things that she doesn't value from what she dislikes so venus is both love and hate both what we value and what we also define ourselves as not valuing and those are very important things so when venus is conjunct pluto that creates a bit of a schism um, because if Venus wants love and partnership and beauty, conjunct Pluto, who likes to things, keep things secret in the dark, who, who wants power and total control, that creates this complex setup whereby that, that craving for love, that craving for pleasure starts to feel a bit wrong, a bit dangerous. And love is dangerous. You know, when we entrust our heart to another person, we are surrendering a part of ourselves that can be controlled, that can be exploited, that can be dominated by another person. And that's not always a negative thing. You know, there's always many elements of power play in every relationship. For instance, if we're talking about things like BDSM, where you actively give over power to someone or have power given to you within a dynamic where you have certain rules, where you do these wild, dangerous, animalistic things that you wouldn't permit to someone if you didn't love them and trust them and hadn't created this space where this, this darker, demonic side of yourself can be released. And, and we all need to have a release of that side of ourselves. And I think during Venus conjunct Pluto, we are more conscious of that side of ourselves. We are more conscious of the part of us that not only wants pleasure and fulfillment and love and closeness, but wants it obsessively and wants it to be ours, totally ours, but is afraid of, is afraid of the competition and is also afraid of the danger of what it is that we're after. And yet that danger is also the thing that makes it so precious. You know, it's a bit like when you have a crush on someone who has that Byronic anti-hero vibe about them. You know, we know they're a bit dangerous. We know they might have violent tendencies. And yet that, that brooding, enigma, their brooding enigmatic nature, the fact that we don't fully understand them and they feel like they could be a bit malevolent also makes it attractive in the same way that during Venus conjunct Pluto, we are also attracted to the other dark think parts of human nature, you know, in the same way that people love watching uh, true crime documentaries, you know, these horrific stories of people being murdered or tortured or kept in a coffin by a madman for seven years in the basement. You know, we all know these parts of us exist and watching those kinds of programs offers us a kind of catharsis because if we can see what's in here, I'm pointing at my solar plexus, by the way, if we can see what's in here out there, 
it, it means we can externalize those dangerous feelings. We don't have to live them out because we can live them out vicariously by watching these documentaries, by watching terrifying horror movies. Uh, <clears throat> very often people um, under Venus conjunct aspects or transits also have a powerful attraction to the occult because so much of the occult of magic of necromancy of sorcery involves drawing power from things that are unseen and you know that can range from just simple things like meditation <laughs> and yoga which involve trying to control yourself trying to control your lower energies and channeling them and transforming them into something higher to things like magic where we are using unseen forces either to try and influence ourselves or to influence someone else or something out there in the outer world you know there's a lot of power in the unseen and so with venus conjunct pluto there, there's always that navigating the subliminal realms of what's going on underneath you know and that need to take things to the surface because so often in in our close relationships there are many things that get left unsaid there are many dangerous or taboo subjects in a relationship that we find a way of sneaking around of of avoiding or of you know this elephant in the room that we try and disguise and work around for the sake of maintaining harmony but Pluto ultimately, it wants truth, it wants revelation, it wants those things that are trapped there in the basements of our hearts to be drawn to the surface because it feels like it will go fucking mad if it doesn't because it, Pluto is obsessive and it will just hold on to something until it finally has been released and there can be this catharsis and there can be the calm even if initially it looks like letting a terrifying monster out of the basement sometimes in the broad light of day that monster is just you know a curtain that's been tossed over the back of the chair it's the very fact that it has been subdued and repressed and turned into this monster that makes so many of these things terrifying but which can also make that revelation give us control over something that previously wasn't in our control which is why venus conjunct pluto is also about um is also related to depth psychology because in depth psychology we do the same we look at someone's past at their fears and their traumas and we try and transform the relationship with those things to make them manageable now <laughs> it's all a case of really whether we let pluto control us or uh, or whether we try and control Pluto, because, of course, that attraction to taboo things, that compulsive need to do something that's a bit naughty can make people do things that are genuinely naughty, you know, like commit theft or commit adultery. You know, you have an obsession with someone you shouldn't. Um, do you act on that or, or do you try and respond to it more responsibly this is not here to pass moral judgments. This is just talking about the different ways in which these things can can manifest. Um, so playing with those, <laughs> playing with those naughty secrets. Now, I think especially as Venus conjunct Pluto is taking place in Capricorn, which is the most materialistic of the signs, um, it can bring up power struggles and uh, difficulties relating to possessions and money and especially the hoarding up and using of money as a magical object as an expression of power as a means of secretly but powerfully imposing your your will upon the world <laughs> and i think that's the thing you know when it when it comes to trying to realize that secret taboo pleasure that that venus conjunct pluto represents pluto always wants to find the secret way of doing it you know whereas Mars would just stride in through to a situation and say, I want that thing, therefore I'm going to have it, give it to me. Pluto is subtle, he's crafty, he's manipulative, he, he uses psychology and cunning to make sure he presents to the world that he doesn't want the thing that he definitely wants, so that it creates the smoke screen around which he can actually attain it. Um, and I think... Being a conjunction and therefore a moment of endings and then therefore new beginnings, there can perhaps 
be the possibility that we might have to let go of something we have been overly attached to. We might have to let go of something we have been fixated and obsessed on because without doing so, that obsession becomes an obstacle that prevents us from moving forward with our lives. It prevents us from seeing the other opportunities and possibilities that might be available to us. So Venus conjunct Pluto, it would be a bit like having the tower next to the lovers in a tarot reading. You know, sometimes something has to be destroyed, which Pluto rules. Sometimes something has to be brought to a state of total collapse before there can be a rebuilding. Um, so yes, there can definitely be health crises with Venus conjunct Pluto, especially relating to the heart and, and the cardiovascular and cardiopulmonary system. Um, there can be problems at home and in the workplace and relation to the family, sometimes literally physically in the home, things, things can go haywire or collapse because Pluto always points out the things that have become unsustainable. He points out those things that have reached a peak of decay and which cannot go forward unless either they end or they are willing to undergo a transformation. They are willing to undergo a renewal. So the endings that Pluto brings aren't necessarily always definite. They are always pointing to some kind of rebirth, but that doesn't make them any less painful or traumatic when they occur. Anyway, um, that's all I want to say for now. I feel like I've got most of covered what I felt I left out yesterday. If you have any further questions on the matter, um, please let me know. And lots of love to you.